one, two, one, two, three. This is a pretty song, The Days of Wine and Roses. It's not a song I would typically play at one of my performances, but something that might be performed at a supper club or on a club date. So it has a beautiful melody and it has all the requirements necessary for a hit song, and it is an excellent vehicle for today's lesson. I purposely make the melody bounce with upbeat eighth notes and shorter staccato notes. It makes the song more fun and playful. The first few changes are tricky. If I was playing this song totally by ear, as in my younger days, I may not have noticed that the second change in bar two was an F7 going to an E7. And I just hint at the F7 by using a B flat as the last note in the first bar. And F sharp is the flat ninth. That's where the ear comes in as we break a rule right away. As the tonal center of the song is G major, in other words, the F sharp just sounds good. Next, I'm using the same minor motif over the A minor in bar 5 and the C minor in bar 7. At this point, I'd like to make a quick announcement about a new project I'm working on to help with my video lessons. Bars 5 and 7 start with a minor motif from a brand new book of mine called A Lyrical Approach Supplemental Book 1. This takes exercises from my theory book, A Lyrical Approach to Jazz Improvising, and transposes those exercises into all keys. And I am transposing the books so they will be available for B flat, E flat, and concert instruments. There will be a part one and a part two book that will be slightly more involved. I'm also preparing play-along tracks, which will be available in iReal Pro on the store page of my website. Just click on the card in this video by hovering over the top right of the screen, and I'll have my books ready in my store soon, along with a link to purchase iReal Pro. iReal Pro is an awesome program for iMacs and iPads that allows you to download and play tracks to exercises or songs. iReal Pro is not compatible with Windows yet, but there is an easy way to run the Android version on a PC using a third-party Android emulator. I've had many requests for these books, and though it is a vast project and time-consuming, I decided to tackle it. 
It is perfect for those of you interested in increasing your jazz vocabulary. And since the B-flat, E-flat, and concert books will be identical, it will also be relative to teaching in classroom situations in high schools and colleges. In the meantime, you can easily pre-order the book by sending me a message from my website by going to the contact tab at richievitali.com. It won't cost you anything to pre-order, and when the books are ready, I'll notify you and you can purchase one or several for your classroom situations if you'd like to. And now on with the lesson. In bar six over the A minor, I'm actually descending on a C minor, which is the change in the next bar. There's several, well, really, there's an infinite number of ways to play this kind of figure. But here's the original plus two more. In bars 11 and 12 over the F sharp half diminished 7 to B7 flat 9 is a line from my A Lyrical Approach Supplemental 2 book you can see here. Two bars before letter B is a 2-5 line over A minor to D7. One of the things that makes this line so interesting is that it uses a tritone substitution. Over the D7, there is not one but two minor triads that are substitutions. The first minor triad is an E-flat minor 7, which is the upper structure of an A-flat 7 which is the tritone of a D7. The B flat, G flat, and E flat are the ninth, the flat seventh, and the fifth of an A flat respectively. Or, if it's easier for you, think not of the D7, but of an A minor seven, and just say to yourself, what is the tritone of an A minor seven? It's an E flat minor seven. So the notes B flat, G flat, and E flat are the fifth, the third and the root of E flat minor seven. Now the B flat, D flat, and F ascending is the sixth minor of a D flat major. The way I get there is if I'm using an A flat seven as the tritone sub of a D seven, I then say to myself that A flat seven is the dominant five chord of a D flat major. Then I say that the sixth minor of D flat major is B flat minor. Now you have to realize that often I play something or hear something and I will figure out the theory involved for it afterwards. I say to myself, that sounds really good. Now why does that work? Something Barry Harris taught me during the jazz cultural theater days is seen in the fourth bar of letter B over the E7. If you start on the third of any dominant chord and arpeggiate up using a dominant chord, you'll get a dominant flat nine chord. Super useful going to a one minor chord. The next four bars, bars 21 through 24, uses a minor motif three times. I like to do this. It gives the audience members a melody line to grasp, and it's fun for me. The next two bars over the B minor 7 to E7 quote the melody. The line over the C sharp half diminished to F sharp 7 flat 9 is very much like a line from my book to a lyrical approach supplemental book. The line from my book is an exercise to get the half diminished sound into your head and under your fingers so it is ingrained. But it is a living and breathing line that is malleable and you should change it and adjust it to fit your style and the circumstances. 
So since I had quoted the melody and ended on an F sharp, I adjusted the line to the situation. It's a bit of muscle memory that comes from practicing these types of lines until you feel them, until you've learned the vocabulary and you can hear them. Well, thanks for watching. This wraps up my lesson on the Days of Wine and Roses. I hope you enjoyed some of my ideas about getting around on this beautiful standard. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to ask in the comments section below. Also, feel free to subscribe to my channel for updates on my newest jazz video lessons. Thank you.